Hey everyone, it is Andrea and today I am coming at you with my favorites for March. I feel like there's not a lot of favorites because this month was kind of weird. A lot of a lot of things that consumed my time happened. So I feel like I just don't have a lot of favorites, but I do have some. So I figured I will share them with you for the purpose of continuity only. Let's talk about planner things first because this is mostly a planner channel and my favorite spread for this month. So I kind of went back and forth between two different spreads, but I just went ahead and decided on a spread that I actually haven't even done the plan with me for yet. Well, you haven't seen the plan with me for yet. And that is the Ye Old Fair spread. And I think this turned out so good with the burgundy underlays, with the champagne lights everywhere else. I think it was just perfection and I just love the way it looks. I love like dark foils with like sparkly foils because I feel like it just pops. So that was probably my favorite spread of the month and then we'll move into my favorite kit that I released this month and that was probably the Aristocats kit and I just love it so much. It reminds me so much of my three kiddos, Lila being Marie and then I always forget the names of the other two. I'm really trying to remember them but the like gray one reminds me of Bennett and then the like brownish one reminds me of Theo. So I cannot wait to use that for Mother's Day. I think it's such a cute kit. It is no longer available, but I hope to do another pop mystery like order within the next maybe like three months. So keep an eye out for that. Then we're gonna move on to the good old books. This is my TBR, which is kind of obnoxious you know we're not gonna talk about it but my favorite book of the month i actually had this favorite like the second day of the month so it feels like it was like 17 years ago and i've read so much in between march was probably my best book month ever i read like i think like including graphic novels like 12 books which is just wild for me but my favorite book of this month was the seven year slip and y'all this book is so I normally do not like magical realism, but this one was just so well done. And then the romance was so good and like so believable. I have a lot of like issues with romance where I feel like it's like, I'm like reading it and I'm like, I don't get why these people like each other, but this one was excellent. I loved it so much. And I've already decided that eventually I do want to get my hands on the, I think it was the fairy loot. Boot fairy 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 box I don't know they had like a special edition of it that looks so so pretty and I really want to get my hands on it so that's on my wish list but I would say so far that's my favorite book of the year I feel like I just read which would probably be my favorite book so far of April because I it's the fourth in case you're wondering of April but I loved Evelyn Hugo and I feel I'm like I don't know which one I liked better if I'm being honest with you so I'm kind of struggling as far as like what my favorite book of the year is but in March if you asked me on like the 30 31st of March I would have said that it was the seven year slip it was just such a good book and I definitely recommend it next thing is a recipe and this one I don't know if I saw it on I think I saw it on Instagram maybe and it is like a broccoli garlic cheese soup and it was so so delicious like roasted broccoli roasted garlic and then you like make it into a soup and it was so good I'm gonna leave the video if I could find it down below slash the recipe but it was phenomenal we served it with like bread and my kids didn't really like love it but I was so obsessed with it I just love garlic I love broccoli I love soup so it was definitely made for me now we're gonna move on to the more random non-categorized favorites but the first is the press on nails i'm gonna say not these specifically these ones are like the kiss brand these ones i feel like pop off a lot but i'm gonna talk about a brand that's like specifically at h-e-b i've not been able to find them anywhere else but i think it's called i actually don't remember what it's called but i'm gonna leave like a picture of it here and these nails i like was looking to tag them on instagram but they don't even have an instagram so i don't and it's only sold at h-e-b i'm very confused but they lasted so long like one popped off i think within like two like in two weeks and it was like a me problem but like these ones I feel like every single day one pops off and I have to re-glue it back on which I just think is obnoxious these are also like thinner I don't know but the ones from HB are so good so if you can find them anywhere else let me know because maybe they have more variety of like designs and things but I'm obsessed with press on nails recently I just feel like I like having my nails done but I don't like going to the nail salon I just feel like I get like bored so 
yeah. If you have any other Parsonia recommendations though that you're like, they stay on, they last. I'm sure a lot of it also depends on the glue. I should see if that brand actually sells glue that's like separate that I can use. I bet you they do. So yeah, press on nails have been a fave for this month. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is underwear, which I feel like is kind of weird, but I'll put like overlay the website on here. I think it's called like auto body or auto body. I don't know, but I have been on the hunt for a hundred percent cotton underwear i just i just am about comfortability breathability i don't care if it's cute most of the options if you're buying in store are not cute and not comfortable they're like stiff so i was like looking online for like underwear that were still cute but like 100 percent cotton and most underwear that if you like are looking up like let's say you go on skims and you go to their cotton underwear they're not 100 percent cotton and i just and on the journey. So I found this website and they have 100% organic cotton. And I was like, all right, let's go ahead and try it and see how it goes. And they have like some more like modern styles than like they do in stores for 100% cotton. And I am obsessed with them. The feel of them are so nice. They are expensive, but I've been looking everywhere and I can't find 100% organic cotton, which I feel like is my preference of the genre of cottons anywhere else that's like soft but like not like has five percent spandex in it so if you're looking for new underwear definitely try these out they ship really fast they also have like a one pair guarantee type thing where if you order like let's say five pairs and you open one of them and you don't like the way it fits you don't like the way it feels you can send the whole thing back just like if you open one of them so look into that as well but i am very picky about underwear and i have been obsessed with these ones so i placed like a small order and then i placed a little bit of a bigger order i think i'm going to just replace all of my underwear which you're supposed to do a lot more often than i thought i don't remember ever growing up being like we need to replace these underwear but apparently you're supposed to the next thing i'm going to talk about is just like a random like two random like ex excerpts of things that happen in my life this month that were my favorites that really brought me so much joy the first thing is my jury duty being canceled y'all don't understand the stress that is put on me whenever i have to do jury duty i've never actually done it the first time that i got called for jury duty i um it was the, the pandemic happened so i did not have to do jury duty which was kind of nice that was like one of the very few perks, you know? And then this time I was like, I really just don't want to. The whole like idea of having like an appointment every day, like appointment that I have to go to was just causing me immense stress. And like the unknown of like not being able to plan, immense stress, like was like feeling sick, not able to like concentrate on anything else. So when I got the email that my jury duty was canceled the day before, I just felt like, Somebody was looking out for me. Somebody really was. So that is a favorite. And then the second favorite of things that happened this month was Jessica, Jake Plans, Baby J visited me. And it was so fun. She got to meet two of my kiddos. She had already met Bennett whenever he was little, but obviously I feel like Bennett's like a new child since she's met him because I think she only ever met him whenever he was like under a year or like close to a year. Yeah, it was so fun. We just hung out and just like kind of like lived my life and just like had her here and it was just a blast that's like one thing with like jessica i feel like is we just kind of like if we're eating and like that's that's and just like with each other we're like happy so i had a blast her and theo are like besties now and i am happy that she came to visit me and it just made me so happy this month next thing i want to talk about is two youtubers i have been on the hunt for booktubers that i like I feel like there's not a lot that I haven't liked. I feel like the only time that I am not like vibing inside of me, I'm like, I don't like them. It's just if they are too, like they use a lot of big words and I'm, and it's not like I don't understand what they're talking about, but it's, it's not relaxing to me to listen to them like talk as if they are a really fancy book. Does that make sense at all? Does that make sense at all? Does it make me sound dumb? Maybe. I don't know. When I watch YouTube video, I really want to relax. That's like my main goal is relaxing and like vibing, feeling like I'm hanging out with a friend. And yeah, so two people that I have found that I've really, really liked. I found a bunch, but these are the top two. The first one is Sarah Elizabeth and her videos are so good. I'm subscribed. I'm subscribed. 
I am subscribed, but I'm surprised that she does not have like a bigger following because her videos are like super well edited. I'm pretty sure that she's going to school for film, which would kind of make sense. And she doesn't really, she has like a semi overlap of books. Actually, both of them really don't read the same genre as me as far as their most preferred genre. Hers is thriller. And she does dabble in like almost every other, I guess, genre as well. Romance would probably be the next one down, but I just find her very soothing and like funny. Her editing's good. It's like fast paced, but like, I don't know. I'm just like vibing with the energy. So definitely check her out if you're into like book videos, especially if you're into thrillers, because I feel like you probably have a lot in common. And then the second person that I want to talk about, which I actually joined his Patreon, which I never really do because I never really know what to do. Like, like what am I looking for in a Patreon? Like what happens in a Patreon? I don't even know. And that our books are sick. And his name is Nick. Books are sick. His name is Nick right there. So his videos, he mostly, well, I feel like his genres vary as well but i feel like he reads more like stephen king classics things like that like that kind of era which he does dabble in romance like a little bit but not in like a little bit of fantasy probably more fantasy than romance but i've seen him mention some fan from romance books but i find his videos super soothing as well i like the way he talks he did a whole book on like kids books that he recommends, which I will get into because I do have two favorites that came from that and they're such fun books. But I don't know. I just really like his energy. He's he's Canadian. He's chill. I vibe. So definitely check him out. The next thing are two kids books that I have been loving reading. I read them to Theo specifically. I feel like they're very his age group. Lila's very into this one specific chick book recently. It has strawberries on the cover and she like feeds us and herself the strawberries. She goes and like makes us eat it. Um, but she only wants to read the chick book. So we can't introduce much new currently. And then Bennett wants to only read about like Pokemon and Mario as of right now. So Theo is my child that will read all these books with me. So I don't even remember the names of them. So I'm just going to put them up here. The one is about a bear. I think it's called Goodnight Already. And it's about this bear who just wants to go to sleep, but this duck is annoying him. And I really like how both of these books are very, like, you can read them, like, in two different voices. And then there's no really other descriptors otherwise. So Theo thinks they're hilarious. And they are really funny. Like, the one about uh, Goodnight Already is just, it, I don't want to spoil any of the endings, but they do have very like funny, like ha ha parents will think of funny endings. And then the other book is called, I think it's Where's My Hat or I Want My Hat Back or something like that. And it's a board book and it has the funniest twist. I like laughed out loud while reading this board book, but it's basically about this bear who is looking for his hat. That is all that it's about, but it is so funny. And Theo thinks it's funny for other reasons because I like do different voices, but it is just both of those. If you have kids, I'd say probably age rage would be like three, but I think Bennett would like them, but he would not be as impressed with them because he's like more into actual, like reading like books. Um, maybe like three to like six, three to seven would be like a really good age for those. So funny. I definitely want to get the other books in the series. Like they have, they're not like a series, but like in the collection, there are more books. They're just so funny and such cute kid books. That my friends is everything for March. Like I said, I didn't have a lot of favorites. I feel, I mean, but I guess I did. I talked for 14 minutes about what I don't really know, but I feel like in March, I just like Bennett got his appendix out. Like Lila had hand foot mouth. Theo had strep. Um, life was just crazy. I, like there's something every day I feel like so it just was like a little bit wild but I had a blast I had a blast filming this I had a blast talking to you I kind of want to switch up my filming location maybe every month and just like kind of film somewhere different I actually had the blinds open and I'll insert that clip here hello that's gonna be too echoey huh it's like a little echoey right now but it's not like as echoey as it was not the blinds the curtains It's my birthday month too. April's our birthday month, which is very exciting. And Theo's birthday month because we are both Taurus April babies. So thank you for watching. If you made it all the way to the end, either leave me a book emoji or let me know what your favorite book of 
March is. I feel like I'm annoying and I have a very like one track personality of I can only have one hobby at a time. Also, let me know if that's you because I feel like I, oh, I didn't have a favorite board game this month because we played like 10 and like a bunch of them were like not new. So I feel like having a favorite board game would not make sense because it'd probably just be Isle of Cats. I'm just going to be honest with you. So I feel like I have like only a certain amount of space in my brain for hobbies and I feel like right now it's like books and like relaxing which i am fine with but that is everything i hope you like this video and i will talk to you in my next one